I am here to inform you that somehow, against all odds, that new TED series is very good. 13 years after the first film released, an ill-advised prequel sitcom has hit Peacock, and not only is it a pretty great show, it's easily the best version of Ted. In fact, it has me questioning why this wasn't a family sitcom in the first place. And based on the audience reactions to the series, it seems like most people are in agreement. The show is seeing a ton of praise, and clips are going viral every day. I can't believe how much I enjoyed this series, but after binging the series and then re-watching the films, it's so clear to me why this project worked so well. So let's dive into the world of Ted, a sentence I never thought I'd ever say. But first, today's video is brought to you by my wonderful patrons. If you are a fan of the channel and want to support me directly, the best way to do that is Patreon, which comes with a bunch of exclusive perks. I've recently started releasing BoJack audio commentaries exclusively on that platform, basically an audio track you can line up while watching the show to hear my takes and comments on the series in real time, conveniently located on a private podcast RSS feed. I've released four episodes so far, and we'll drop a new one every week until we finish the series. There's also currently an 11-minute sneak peek for a massive video that I'll be releasing in a couple of months, and there will be plenty more looks at that video before it's released. Tears start as low as $1, and I really appreciate any support you can give. Today, I want to specifically shout out our top-tier patron, Alexander Halka. Thank you so much, Alexander. I couldn't do this without the support of viewers like you. Patreon, again, is the best way to support me directly, and I can't thank you enough for watching. Watching. I have never been a huge fan of the Ted films. I did enjoy a lot of things about the first one. I always felt like at the core of that movie, there's an earnest, heartfelt story that I do love, but that story is surrounded by shock humor and increasingly dated pop culture references. Of course, there are still some good jokes and funny situations in there, but they all feel a bit few and far between. But what really works is that there is a real human story at the center of the first Ted, a man struggling to transition from the adolescent stages in his life into full-on adulthood, a guy who literally cannot let go of his childhood teddy bear, and it's negatively affecting his career and his relationship. Ted represents more than just a childhood keepsake. He's the embodiment of all of the childish things that John continues to hold on to even into his 30s. On top of this, you really understand why it's so hard for him to let go, and that's because they do a great job showcasing John and Ted's chemistry. If you don't buy into their friendship, you don't really buy into the general dilemma. That being said, while these ideas are at the core of the film, as I mentioned earlier, they're surrounded by lazy shock humor and dated pop culture references. Oh, a prostitute shat on your floor? Great. Back off, Susan Boyle! Ah, yes, this is a reference that will certainly stand the test of time. The funniest stuff in the Ted films is the character and relationship-based humor between the pair. I low-key hate the Thunder Buddy song in the movie, but I like the idea that Ted is John's safety net, that he's never really faced his fear of thunder because he's always had Ted to reaffirm how scary it is. And at the end of the movie, when Ted seemingly dies, it's immediately followed up by a huge clap of thunder. You did everything you could. Sorry. This is the first time John doesn't react, even though he's lamenting the death of a teddy bear. I just think a lot of the more intentional moments like this really work for the film. I also find the ending of the film pretty sweet, where Laurie is the one to wish Ted back to life. Despite the fact that he's been the main obstacle preventing John from growing up, John is able to hold on to his past without letting it dictate his future. And then John and Laurie get married. It's a sweet story. It's a nice ending. That they completely undo in Ted 2, which is a dog shit film. Just bafflingly bad. And it's because they abandon all of the earnest development from the first film, and then double and triple down on the references and shock humor. The earnest moments that they go for in the second film feel like an afterthought, completely disconnected from the overall plot. It doesn't help that it is two hours long and feels like four different movies. Which is why I was so pleasantly surprised when the Ted series swung the pendulum in the exact opposite direction. Setting the show in 1993 and essentially making it a family sitcom honestly has me wondering why this wasn't the format for the concept in the first place. Place. Actually, according to an interview with The Wrap, McFarlane did first come up with the idea in the 90s as a potential TV series, but shifted the concept when he wanted to dip his toes into feature directing. And after watching the show, I kinda wish it had stayed a TV premise because this is the best version of Ted. Not only because it's embracing the more earnest nature of the story at the core of the film, but because I genuinely just find it funnier. Who describes an infant as mild? Yeah, I'm more hung up on tender. 
Yeah, somebody's eating this baby. A family sitcom naturally embraces those exact things that worked so well about the first movie, earnest character for storylines and relationship dynamics. And without trying to pad your runtime to the length of a feature film, those character moments feel like the focus. The show doesn't abandon the more shocking jokes entirely, but they sort of work better in this setting, where they feel less like interchangeable gags and more intrinsically tied to whatever the story of the week is. There's this one episode where Ted says some of the most heinous things you could possibly imagine to a girl at school. We all know about the nose job you had last year. You didn't fool anybody because we all remember before the surgery when you tried to kiss Danny Santucci and you poked his eye out. And this is just the beginning of it. He says some worse stuff after this. However, in the context of the story, this girl was bullying John's mom, Susan, who was teaching for the very first time as their substitute teacher. It doesn't justify what Ted said to her, but the shocking jokes are in defense of a person that Ted loves and that we care about as audience members. They weren't just there for meaningless shock value. They actually build on the story at hand. It's actually an example of a joke being both shocking and earnest and heartfelt, a wild line to walk, but one they do pretty well in this episode. The show also continues to reference pop culture, but since it's set 30 years in the past, we know what cultural touchstones are still going to have an impact on the audience, what things have stood the test of time and will make the audience laugh. In the final episode of the season, after the prom, John is about to finally lose his virginity, only for the entire thing to be interrupted by the O.J. Simpson police chase. This killed me, especially Johnny desperately trying to steer the mood back to where it was while Bethany freaks out about OJ. I think Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman would really want us to make the most of this night. But the reason that the show continues to hit emotionally is because of how damn likable the cast of characters are. Max Burkholder is genuinely amazing as Johnny. Honestly, I like him better than Marky Mark, even though he's doing a Marky Mark impression the entire time. Hopefully that impression stops before he starts claiming he would have stopped 9-11. That's real, look it up. They also put even more focus on his chemistry with Ted. I just buy them as a pairing more than I did in the film. Let me ask you something. You ever get self-conscious being the only white guy at your school? Oh, last year we had an Indian kid. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but they got him. What does that mean? I liked him too. But even beyond Johnny and Ted, the rest of the family rounds out the cast so well, with my favorite probably being John's mom, Susan. Alana Ubach gives such a genuinely excellent performance. The accent she puts on sells her reserved nature, but also allows for very funny line delivery. She's just characterized as the sweetest woman, to the point where she worries about any slightly unsavory thought she has. One of my favorite moments is when she's talking about a girl who bullied her in high school, and the first time that she had seen that girl since high school. And I saw that she lost a hand. And I was so happy about it. Does it make me a terrible person? Just such a perfect character moment, incredible delivery, and so human. Suze might actually be my favorite character in the show. John's cousin Blair is also pretty instantly a well-rounded character. She plays the role of the forward-thinking college girl who won't put up with the lack of political correctness strewn about the Bennett household. But they do such a great job giving her a strong moral and personal conviction in regards to being a good influence on Johnny, mostly due to her own shitty parents and her feelings of failure in regards to keeping her own brother out of trouble. Mom and dad are lost causes, but I tried so hard to protect Kevin. And I couldn't. John's father, Maddie, is a little bit more one note. The angry, non-PC Vietnam vet. The kind of guy who's really struggling to adapt as times change. But even he gets some great emotional moments. Struggling to connect with his family, and particularly his niece, because of his different worldview. Actually, some of the sweetest moments in the series involve Maddie. His apology to Blair after insulting her and her girlfriend, Sarah, in the Christmas episode is so well done. It's sort of drawn out and awkward, which I actually think helps showcase just how difficult it is for Maddie to admit that he's wrong, even though it's very important for him to do so. Maddie also bails on Christmas Mass and misses Susan's choir solo in this episode, and to make up for his mistake, he buys her a karaoke machine for Christmas. I figured you, you could sing. You know, you solo. I love you so much. It's really sweet, probably the sweetest end to any episode. It feels funny to be highlighting all of the most heartfelt, heartstring-tugging moments in a fucking TED series, but... Here we are. It's the stuff that really makes this thing sing for me, and there is a ton of that. In one episode, they discover that Susan wanted to be a teacher before getting married, and Johnny and Ted get her a job as a substitute in their class after their teacher gets fired. It's so nice to have a teenage character who is just so committed to being there for his mother. He clearly really cares about his mom. It's actually just an awesome departure from a lot of old sitcoms. You're not embarrassed to have your mother teaching your class? 
I already walk around school with my teddy bear. I think I'll be fine. But the show also manages to tie comedy into some of its sweeter moments really well. One of my favorite episodes is the second of the season, where Johnny and Ted try to get revenge on their bully, Clive, by pretending to be his absentee father and convincing him to go to a restaurant dressed as a sailor. Johnny and Ted feel so bad for humiliating Clive that they sort of end up taking on the role of surrogate fathers for him, trying to give him advice and father him from afar. And even after they get caught, they kind of embrace the role. You've really turned things around. Your grades are better, you're smiling more. I am. All the guys in Woodshop are saying so. I really loved not only this episode, but the way they approached the whole bully story. They could have easily made Clive take on that bully role across the series, but they sort of subvert the concept by the end of the second episode, which actually ends with Clive, Johnny, and Ted sort of becoming friends. A major aspect throughout the entire season is how Ted is really Johnny's only friend. And while they obviously can't have Johnny progress to full-on maturity given the premise of the film, they do a great job showcasing his growth as a teenager and sort of seed micro examples of what we see later in the film that listening to Ted isn't always the best move. In the season finale, Johnny really connects with this girl, Bethany, only for Ted's advice to play up his own sexual experience to totally derail everything later. So to convince Bethany that he was actually lying, Johnny jumps up on stage at the prom and proudly announces to everyone that he's a virgin. I loved this because it actually also parallels one of the moments I quite liked in the first Ted film, when he gets up on stage at the Nora Jones concert and sings horribly for Lori, fully embarrassing himself. They do a good job cooking up these thematically similar moments from the film and then wrapping them in a more sappy sitcom package here. Like, though we know from the film and parts of the series that Ted can be a bad influence on Johnny, we also see that he generally has a good heart when the chips are down. He goes far out of his way in the film to try and convince Laurie to give John another shot, and similarly, in the pilot here, after Maddie kicks Blair out of the house, Ted gives up a priceless piece of memorabilia to convince Maddie to give her another chance, Sly Stallone's mouth guard from Rocky. <laughs> yes, the one at Planet Hollywood is a fake. Holy! Holy shit! Holy fucking shit! I really appreciated these kinds of allusions to the future for these characters, much more than the overt references to the events of the film later. Like them deciding to write the damn Thunder Buddies song in the finale or whatever. I can totally do without that stuff. I'm sure a lot of people will be echoing the sentiment, but the Ted series reminds me of early Family Guy. I did a video about season one of Family Guy about a year ago, and most of the things I raved about in that video are also true for this show. Yeah, they can be silly and outrageous and pretty stupid sometimes, but they they hook you by anchoring each episode with family-focused stories that have actual heart. Honestly, I don't remember the last time I was this invested in a family sitcom, and it's a prequel to a film series I don't even particularly like. I think the only real complaints I have are, I wish the season had more episodes, and I wish they dropped them weekly to make it feel even more like a traditional family sitcom. I'm kind of sick of these binge drops, you guys. I just think this would have been a fun show to talk about every week. But it does finally feel like they figured this concept out, and they packaged it into something that I would love to see continue for at least a few more years. This covered Johnny's junior year of high school. It would be great to see it cover senior year and maybe even the beginning of college. Ted at college, come on, it writes itself. And despite unfavorable reviews from critics, which I mostly disagree with, the show seems to have a great shot at continuing beyond season one. It's already been confirmed that it's the most watched original series in Peacock history, though let's be honest, that might be a low bar. But I have seen different clips going viral every single day on Twitter since the show released. It seems Seems like people really like this thing. In another interview with The Wrap, McFarlane said they'd only move forward with more Ted if the audience cares. Seth said, I think we felt after Ted 2 that maybe the appetite for Ted in that forum was not quite as ravenous as it was after the first movie. So I don't know, there would have to be a reason to do it. There has to be an audience for something like this. You don't want to just keep rehashing the same character if no one's watching. I guess there's a lot of that today anyway, but it's not really our first order of business. There really has to be an appetite. Well, it seems like the appetite is there, and I think that that's in no small part due to the fact that they have found the ideal vehicle to deliver Ted to the audience. The sitcom format just works for him. So yeah, somehow, against all odds, I am shilling for a Ted continuation in 2024. Cannot believe this is the world I live in right now. If you haven't checked out Ted yet, check it out on Peacock. It's pretty damn fun. Peace. Johnny! I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons, he's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny two cellos, watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.